Hello and welcome! Today we are jumping back into some more Mumir Basic. For those who have not seen it before, uh, Mumir Basic is a format where the, this is your deck, it's all basic lands, and you get the Avatar Mumir Vig, which essentially says every turn you discard a card and pay X, and you make a random creature with converted mana cost equal to X from all of Magic. So there's a lot of different creatures you can get, and it's really fun because there's so many cool creatures in Magic. You could discover a lot of old things you've never seen before. Um, and there's a lot of variants, and it's fun to play, and hopefully you enjoy watching it. See you guys in the games. Alright, hello and welcome. Today's been a, a crazy day. I'm gonna go first. I've been, uh, <laughs> I don't know who saw some of this, but I've been trying to do, like, the sliver cube a bunch today, and, uh, didn't work. It should work soon, but it did not. I'm gonna make a one-drop here. I gotta stop tapping. So if I'm feeling a little weird, that's why. Um, but we decided to do a Momir tournament. Ooh, that's actually somewhat decent. We did a, did a Momir tournament, and uh, that also didn't work. My, my round one opponent did not show up. So I'm playing against the winner of the previous round's Momir tournament, and uh, we'll see how this goes. Got a Death Greeter. Opponent skipped their one drop. I'm going to skip my two drop, I think. On the play, you got to skip some things. And normally I try and get a good one mana play. This uh, obviously was not great. Activated abilities of creatures cost two less. So that's just basically a two mana two two. Not the end of the world. Let's keep playing mountains. Get rid of this island. Whenever it dies, each player puts a card from their hand on top of their library. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that. That might be good if I like start drawing cards, but right now I'm behind on cards. Whenever permanent is returned to your hand, you may pay one if you do draw a card. That's actually kind of nice. They're going to be tapped out almost every time, but it's not the worst thing ever. Let's get more. I'm going to discard a swamp here. Now we're talking. So I think I can skip my five mana plays now that I have a Pharaoh's Warden. And that'll make sure I can get up to eight pretty safely. Juggernaut attacks each combat if able and can't be blocked by walls. Okay. So I can actually force them to put a card on top if they if I want to. We're gonna go all mountains, last turn. Hopefully they don't get anything too scary. Island walk, what is this? 5-9 island walk? Oh, when it attacks, you exile it. Oh, <laughs> okay, so this card basically can't attack. <laughs> that is such a weird card, the turtle turtle. <laughs> I love it. Um, so we'll go to begin combat here. We're going to tap down this. All right, so I'm going to trade off here. I can take one, and that's fine, because Death Greater will gain me life in the long run anyway. So I'm going to always yes to Death Greeter. And then put a card on top. Doesn't really matter. So opponent's behind it too, so they have to like skip if they want to. But I'm going to keep making stuff. Getting rid of this planes. The 5-5 five, five monstrosity. Not going to be doing any of that. All right. Well, we got good defense now. A little bit of a life total cushion. So our opponent makes 6. They go to 1. So they're locked on 7 as well. So I kind of want to skip and go up to 8 mana plays, depending on what they get. Torrential Gear Hulk is a 5-6. Uh, I do kind of need to make a uh, locker for that. Yeah, let's just make a 7. Hopefully it's not Phage. This would be a funny time for Phage. But we're basically just hoping that we can draw a card eventually. Ooh, a 5-4 flyer. That's pretty nice. Oh, interesting. Putting wastes in there. And they're skipping their 7-drop, which may or may not be advisable. Getting messages here from someone. Oh yeah, <laughs> Sphinx says Cascade and Shuffling. Whoa, I don't want that. How do I get rid of this? Oh, hang on. <laughs> Are they skipped? I'm just going to keep making 7s. I think that's fine. Obviously, there's a chance you just lose with Phage, but I think just having creatures in... Wow, that's actually really good. Just having more creatures in play is generally quite worth it. So we attack with the Sphinx. They don't have flying, right? Yeah. No flying or reach. We're uh, chatting up a storm over here. I'll try not to put it on the stream for you guys, but oh, I guess I don't want to auto-yield. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh, boy, that's bad. Am I dead? I think I'm dead. They can attack with three creatures that each have 
six, six, ten, 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 ten. That's I'm actually not dead, surprisingly. So we survived a crater of behemoth attack. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, they definitely just right click. So, uh, no, because if they attack out, I might have lethal on the swing back. Huh. This might be the first non-lethal crater hoof behemoth I've ever seen. Yes, please attack with the meandering tower shell. Uh-oh. Opponent, no, it dies when you attack. There you go. No, why? <laughs> why? Um, that was just bad. So, I block like this and I take 23. And then I hit them for 8, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, this seems okay, right? That's 23. I go to two life. I don't hate it. <laughs> Hearts go out to dead turtle. Yeah, I mean, two is not the worst. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff that can just kill me from here, but target creature gets plus five, plus five. Yo, we got to draw a forest like right now. Uh, So I can't really take any damage from anything, but I can hit them for 10, and then I tap down one... And then I have two blockers here and here. That seems okay, because then they're dead to my flyer. Like next turn I can hit them for eight in the air. So 10 now and then eight next turn does, it is lethal. I've also never seen this card before. Insect, I'm guessing a druid, because everything's a druid. So we can beat everything except a haste creature. Actually, we can still beat a haste creature. That's game. Took down the crater hoof. Poor turtle. <laughs> I wish he could come back. This looks like the GG swing out. Oh, I actually should have tapped down the Biomancer's Familiar, but it doesn't really matter. So I block here. Yeah, yeah, that's game. All right, I'm just sideboarding. Obviously no changes. There's some discrepancy about uh, Coconuts having conceded too early. I don't think he could have won that. I mean, if he had not attacked with a turtle, that would have been fine. But um, someone who was viewing said that he could have won. Ooh, a 1-1 one -one flyer for one is actually pretty decent. Someone said that he could have won that game. I guess we can, you know, look back and see. I don't think he could have, but I'm not perfect. Ooh, Gravecrawler. A two man, a one mana two one. Not the best offense. I think I'm going to prevent chat from showing stuff. I'm not sure how to do that necessarily, but it's showing a lot. Well, plated Sea Strider, the one four against my two one is kind of broken. I think I'm just going to skip my two mana play here. I'm not under that much pressure, and I'd rather make better creatures. Gravecrawler not doing very much, unfortunately. This is a 3-2, so they don't have any deserts. Okay. Take the damage. That's actually a weird attack with the Sea Strider, because now I can attack with Gravecrawler. But I guess they probably just wanted to guarantee that they get in some damage. What is with these desert cards? Okay, well, we hit for two because this card can't block. And then I imagine I just trade off my camels here. Uh-oh. What is this? What does this do? Flying Vigilance Death Touch Lifelink. At the beginning of your end step, proliferate. What? Why does that do literally everything? <laughs> That's absurd. All right, well, we got some work cut out for us. That is literally just ability soup. I am imagining that's a popular commander. With like planeswalkers or something nonsense like that. You can tell how much competitive commander I play by that comment. <laughs> uh, add, ooh, that's actually pretty good. Adding mana in this format is just really good because you're like gonna end up one creature ahead of your opponent, basically. I don't know why I'm still seeing chats, but I am. Sorry, coconuts. I'm trying to commentate, and the the chats are just a little bit uh, distracting. General, sorry. Switch your library for an alley creature card. So they don't have any allies, which is good. So it's just a five mana three four. If they do happen to get up to uh, enough mana to activate it, I guess they can pump their guy by one. So let's here make sure we use all of our mana now. Get rid of this island. Whenever it dies. Nope. <laughs> Not doing anything there. It's still a four four, which can block General Tazari, but not the best, not the worst. I really want to like somehow draw a bunch of cards in a turn and just kind of go off with this. Destroy target land. So they're going to kill one of my lands and then lose one of theirs because they don't have triple black. But we're like dying very quickly to this Atraxa. 
I don't, maybe that'll work. Maybe we're just all going to lose lands a bunch. I actually don't know how this happens, but we'll find out. Like, I think they can activate Demonic Horde in response to the trigger, but we'll see. Because if they can't, they're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> you may destroy target creature. It's a 5-5 five, five flyer, so we just kill Atroxa here. If they have a Swamp, this is very risky. But I think I'm going for it. Because I can kill their Swamp this turn. So they kill my Swamp. Yeah, and I can keep them locked out of black. So essentially, they're not going to get any more mana. It's not the worst. <laughs> it's not the worst situation to be in. Because they're only a 5 mana and I have 6. Oh, 5 mana, 4, 3 fear is decent. Mountain, keep making stuff. Forest. Pendivis, now that's a card. We just have a lot of good... Does this have flying? No, but I can make flyers. And they don't have any flyers, so I attack here. I guess I can attack with a Nami as well, right? It's a 4-4. Four -four. Uh, it's actually kind of better on defense. They kill my Swamp. This is getting very bad for them. Discard a card at random. It gets powerful, but they can't do anything. But it is a 1-2, which makes my Pentavis worse. That was a good attack. Take one. Go land. Make another seven, and then we're gonna start falling behind on mana, but our opponent is very down. Ooh, it's a five, seven reach. I like that, I like that a lot. So let's hit for five, and then I think I might just make some Pentavis tokens, but also just making six mana plays is kind of tempting. And then like making Pentavis tokens later on when our lands are kind of all just gone. <laughs> this card is horrible. <laughs> Get rid of a mountain. Because, like, I don't think there are any creatures that our opponent can hit that get them out of Overseer of the Damned. What is this other ability? Oh, this does a non-token creature. Okay. That doesn't do anything here. Hate to attack unless defending player controls an island. This is very unfortunate for Coconuts. <laughs> make a six. Because I'm just making creatures of a much higher caliber than he can make. Whoa. Okay. Flying Vigilance Trample, not the worst. Hit for five. All right, let's check out the chat now. Stop ignoring chat. Show chat. <laughs> Killing that one. I don't. This is a very, very strange card. It's really bad. <laughs> did he make a zero drop? I think he did. I wish I could see. I guess I could check game log. Frexian Marauder. I don't know what that is, but it's something. Oh, I don't think he killed a land. Oh, I should uh, make sure I pay mana here. Loses one life for each creature they control. That's pretty good. In fact, it is forcing them to chump block this turn. I think that's game. I don't know how they can survive from this. Did he target his own land? <laughs> Going out on your own terms. <laughs> I appreciate them killing their own land. There's really nothing they could do here. They were just very far behind on lands. And we attack here and here, and that should just be lethal. If they had one more swamp, they would have just completely won the game with demonic hordes. <laughs> See you guys next round. All right, we are playing against Swift Warkite, and we're gonna go first. Obviously, keeping this hand, I am gonna keep making one drops. I like it. It makes the game feel like you have more like decision decisions. We'll see how this goes. Getting rid of one of these. Stinky Plains. Whenever you cast a spell that targets it. Eh, not going to do that. But this is an 4 So I think I'm probably going to just sit behind this 4 Target creature can't attack. Yeah, that's not great. So like I can skip now my two mana play. No attacks. And like this can prevent a bunch of damage. So that I can make, depending on what they get. Yeah, I'll take one damage and... Am I okay taking one more or do I want to make a three drop? I think I'm okay taking one more. Whenever it enters the battlefield, you gain one life. And then transform. I don't know if transform works on tokens. I'll just warn my opponent. Don't want them to accidentally transform and then lose a creature. I don't know if it works. It might. 
getting rid of probably island is the worst and if you cast an enchantment <laughs> not gonna be doing that but two three does hold down the fort right now and opponent did go one two three so they're gonna be locked out at seven so i'm gonna be making better creatures than them oh maybe not they got a two two flyer that's actually pretty good that they're just gaining life let's play a swamp get rid of this forest Oh, now we're talking. Beautiful. We got a 5-5 five, five Vigilance over here, and it's just going to keep getting bigger, too. <laughs> Experimental. Create two Thopters. That's quite good. So it's an... Oh, they have a lot of flying power. I don't like it. Um, I can double block the 2-2, two, two, but then my Geist Honored Monk shrinks quite a bit. I think I would rather wait take a little bit of damage here and then see what I draw or I guess what I hit here. Get rid of this planes, don't need it. Beginning of your upkeep, you search for a rat. I can't do that. Um, I can hit for six. They have one, two, three, four, five, six. So they can like block with everything. I am kind of okay trading this for everything they have. All right, that works. Worm coil engine. Okay, well now we need to start playing for the long game because worm coil is going to do a lot. Uh, suppose I double block this because I'm not going to race a worm coil engine. That's just not going to happen. Uh, no, don't have any rats to get. Come on, deck, give me the goods. Flying three five. Okay, well, I kind of regret trading off my creatures now, and fear can be blocked by artifacts. Spike Hatcher. So you can move counters and put things on it. I'm Pretty okay just trading off these two creatures for the worm coil engine because they're going to be able to pump it up anyway. Uh, this is problematic. I shouldn't have lost both of my creatures because then I could just trade one creature. Not like the 2 3 is doing that much, but I think I got a block like this. Can I just say always no? Get our swamp down. So now we're making eight drops. So this is where we do pull ahead. The creatures we're making are slightly better than our opponents. Uh, never mind. <laughs> uh, I can attack with Rat Catcher. I don't think I really have any good attacks. Spike Catcher is going to make combat very problematic. Oh boy. So they can activate one, two, three times. Uh, that's actually, I don't know if they wanted to make this attack. Now I can block here, here, uh, here. Like I can basically, they need to put two counters here. If they want to save their flyer. I don't think this block goes very well for them. They can remove a counter to regenerate it. Yeah, that seems actually not that bad. Because they can... Yeah, none of these attacks go too poorly for me. And they lose their best card. I imagine they want to pump up this worm. Oh, no. Well, that went really well. They do have access to 8 mana now, but... That went a lot better than it could have. I don't know if it was necessarily a mistake. It was just... Oh boy. <laughs> uh, I don't think it matters. I think we're <laughs> pretty close to dead here. Opponent's at 42 life. I have three creatures and they're hitting me for just a ton. Now it probably just makes sense to swing out. So now I can block here. Oh boy. Am I just dead? Here. Block here, I take 8, 9. Uh, okay. The good part about this is it kind of forces them to like activate abilities. And then they're not making creatures. So like we just need to find a creature off the top. They're going to trade with the rat catcher, which makes sense. But now spike catcher is pretty small. Oh, they don't trade. All right. <laughs> We're at 6. I need something pretty badly here. Come on, magic gods. Walker of the Grove. Maybe I can survive? I don't think so. So this is a must block. If I block here, I block here, I take four. I think I go to one currently. Unless... One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I go to one because they can move over Spike Hatchling, but this is, this is how it ends for me. All right, deck, we need something very, very good here. <laughs> I don't know if that card exists. 
Oh, that's funny. We gave it a good shot. <laughs> I'm gonna out on my terms. Greatness at any cost. Alright, on to game two. That was rough. Alright, let's go first. Hope for a, a better situation here. Wow, I used up a lot of time. Sorry, Swift Fork. I, I've been commentating, so it's it's hard. Make a thing. I need I keep remembering to like turn face up, choose one. So that doesn't do anything. So it's a one mana one one. Perfect. Just the card I wanted. Get rid of wastes. Oh, they got it. Oh one. Well, now I have pressure. I'm gonna make a two drop and see what happens. I can always skip a bunch of uh Discard a card, search a library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped. Oh, now that is a card I'm interested in. So I basically just turn all of my... Yeah, that's great. I can ramp up so quickly. Um, yeah, so I, I basically like turn my cards in hand into cards in play. And I think I just skip my next turn because I'm going to be spending two mana to ramp anyway. So this actually works out pretty nicely. It's obviously not as good as something that just like taps for mana. But like I can use this twice and then just be at like six drops my while my opponent's at like four drops. Two mana two two, sure. Forest. Uh I guess I just activate now. Whoa, 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 that's not what I wanted. I want to do this. Go ahead. Yeah, that's really good. So next turn I can go up to five, but I might just skip that turn as well and just go straight up to like eight. This is a two two that becomes a three three and can wow, that's actually really really good because you, you get threshold very quickly in this format and so they can just give one of my their attacking or blocking creatures plus three plus three really makes combat a nightmare let's go forest so i have five we'll go up to six yeah so we'll wait a turn again i guess i could do this at instant speed so might as well this is a three three first strike that i can get rid of their first strike okay <laughs> I don't hate it. If they attack with this, I will definitely block. Oh man. Um, do I want to double block? I don't think so. I think this card has some value. Like if I get an activated ability that I want the color for. Get rid of this planes. Just grab more mountains. Get rid of their first strike. <laughs> Alright, let's start making dudes. Every demon dies, all creatures get smaller. Okay, that's something to note. Uh no attacks. So they're still quite a bit away from threshold. Whenever it enters the battlefield, all non-zombie creatures get smaller. What? Okay, fine. We're still pretty far ahead though. My opponent's gonna make six drops and I'm making eight drops. Like I got all the ramp that I needed. Oh boy. Take ten, I guess. That's actually a pretty good card to get in this position, but maybe not because I take uh, 6, 12, 13, 14, 15, I take like 16. So they have to bounce a creature and we both lose a land. I don't know if this is good or bad for me, but they can't bounce the Raising Snit or else they lose. Uh-oh. I think they literally lose because I just killed them with my avatar. <laughs> Okay, so they okay, so they did not choose an attacking creature, so I'll just get rid of a forest. But I'm with the opponent. It is rough to get in this format, but I think in general it's kind of a cool design. I thought it gained vigilance. No. Well, I guess I when this or another zomb non zombie or another zombie enters. Okay, so I just block here. Take a lot. I go to ten. They have to block my avatar of slaughter and they have exactly lethal on the backswing. So I need to get a creature that doesn't die here. And I think I might just make a six drop because phage is a seven. Okay, so I think that's game now because they take 10. They lose this. I get to block a creature unless they can make a haste guy. That's game. But yes, that card did just lose them that game. But that's kind of the nature of Momir. So a haste creature, that does not do it. It's better this way though, because now we get a game three. Freaking Avatar of Slaughter, man. That card is brutal. All right, all right. Game three, let's go. Keep this hand. So if his one drop is bad, I might just not make one. 
but I really like doing it. <laughs> it's like the gambler's fallacy in me. I just like it because you could get something good. So they make one. Whenever an opponent draws a card, if you have control a red permanent. Uh, that's actually quite good. That can do a lot of damage very quickly. So I will make a one drop here because I don't want to die to that. Whenever you cast a spell that targets it. Well, that won't be happening, but I will trade off one ones. Hopefully it's not a red creature. Okay, it's another 1-1. One, one. Given this, I think I'm just going to take the opportunity to skip my 2 mana plays. Just go straight to 3s, because opponent needs to skip like things anyway, and like I can trade off hero for either of their 1-1s. One, What's well, a bugged card? No. They, they, you need a red permanent for Kendrick Parasite to activate. Sarcomite Mirror. Well, oh, can gain flying. That's pretty good. You can sacrifice it to draw a card. That's actually kind of good. So you can like get in for a bunch of damage. Oh, interesting. I will definitely block here. Because that will prevent damage in the long run. Get rid of a uh, forest probably. <laughs> uh, sure. This is one of my favorite cards for like EDH or Commander. Because you can like trade one of your dorky lands for like a really good land in this format is pretty bad because it i mean it just doesn't do anything <laughs> but i guess i have more red mana now i only did that because i don't have any more uh uh oh okay so there's no creature card so it basically says zombies just mill me that's fine i can block the sarcomite mirror i'll take this one the dalkin plotter has bigger and better things planned so i actually don't mind getting hit by undead alchemist Get rid of an island. Pay one life, it gets plus one plus two. Sure. So that can block the alchemist, but I don't even think I have to. Like, this creature that just hits me for four mil is not the end of the world. You can even come in on your turn, you may pay four if you do support two. That's quite good. That's a good thing for them to do with their mana. What did they just do? Oh, they sacrificed the Sarcomite Mirror. I guess that makes sense. Let's go Swamp. I don't really want to attack with Carrion Hauler. East Mentor. Uh, I'm actually okay with swinging out now because they can only trade for two of my creatures and clearing the board, getting rid of this mascot is actually kind of good for me. So I think I do just swing out here. Mentor the Vidalcan Plotter. They're forced to trade off for this. Right, so this blocks here. And then if they want to kill one of my two twos, they have to double block. Oh, that's... Still quite good for me. All right, we <laughs> the board is clear. We have a 2-2 in play. But we're ahead of our opponent as far as like uh, lands to activate things go. So that is a 6-mana 3-3. Three, three. Get rid of this forest. Soul Bond. Both creatures have Trample. I will not be Soul Bonding with the Plotter. I don't really want a 2-2 two, two Trample, but I will Soul Bond with something bigger. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> That's a big boy. I basically have to chump block that every single turn. Or hit them for damage. This is pretty good. I think they mean Sarah Avatar, but yeah, Sarah Avatar is very good. So what is this? This is a 6-6 six, six flying? Uh, I think the answer is no. I don't really need Trample there. So we're going to chump block the Sarah Avatar with the Dalkin Plotter. Kind of makes me regret trading off the board. They have a 5-7 flyer. <laughs> oh boy. We got a lot of chumps to do. I need like a death touch creature or something. Go mountain. Make an 8 drop. Give me the goods. Oh no. Well, chromium is at least something to sacrifice. Uh, this is just going to die, right? So I might as well soul bond. And they have a 5-7, so I guess I can attack with both. And this forces them to take damage. Right? So I swing like this. They can either just block here and then take six. Or they can double block the worm. This seems okay. Because I have Chromium back to block. I lose to them. Um, oh, right. Wait. The worm was a 6-4? That was bad. <laughs> For some reason, I thought the worm could survive the Chancellor. That was bad. Because I really wanted... Oh, gosh. This is not good. Okay, so given that, I will definitely trade off here. I'll take 19. Uh, does that work? 
I take 19 and I fall to 3, and then I need to find a blocker or a removal spell or something that gains life. Otherwise, I take 8, but then I'm just under the abyss. I think this is a better shot for me. Fortunately, we lose Chromium. But I, I basically need to find a creature with an enter the battlefield effect. Otherwise, I lose, which I'm, I'm willing to accept. But I don't think I was winning anyway with their 5-7 in play. No, I was winning. Oh, I punted that game. Oh, man. I went all in. That was probably wrong, but I was still taking like five. I don't know. I could argue for either way how to play that. So we block here, block here. We take four, we die. Oh, Warren Collects would have been great. So I, I guess that is an argument why I should have not played to just hit a creature with Enter the Battlefield effect. I should have just... Sacrifice my creature and hope to hit an 8 mana card that wins the game. Although, would that have even won? Because, let me think about this. I get Born Clex, I have to chump block Sarah Avatar, and then I still take like 5 or like 7. Born Clex makes Emrakul, I have to chump block Sarah Avatar again. I don't think I would have won anyway. So I'm pretty okay with how that went. See you guys next round. Hello and welcome. Today we are jumping back into some more Momir Basic. For those who have not seen it before, uh, Momir Basic is a format where the, this is your deck. It's all basic lands. And you get the Avatar Momir Vig, which essentially says every turn you discard a card and pay X and you make a random creature with converted mana cost equal to X from all of Magic. So there's a lot of different creatures you can get and it's really fun because there's so many cool creatures in Magic. You could discover a lot of old things you've never seen before. Um, and there's a lot of variants, and it's fun to play, and hopefully you enjoy watching it. See you guys in the games. All right, we're playing against Green Kobold. Obviously keeping this hand. We're on the draw. Not ideal, but acceptable. Oh, another person who doesn't make one drops. I love it. I love it. We're going to make one. Vigilant Martyr. Sacrifice it to regenerate a creature, and it can counter a spell, which doesn't do anything. But the sacrifice to regenerate is actually really relevant. That means later on we can, like, trade off. And then, you know, use this one drop to get back our two drop, which is pretty nice. Sacrifice an enchantment. Okay. <laughs> Orochog is not too scary. So we're going to make a two drop. Hopefully get a, um, I need to stop tapping before I activate this. Hopefully get a 2-2 two -two or an 0-1. Oh, oh my gosh. These are some of the best one and two mana plays I've ever gotten. So anytime I make a creature, this turns into that. It's not very good defensively, but offensively, it's insane. Turn witness. Woo! Ooh, that's good. I want that. Do I take one? That's fine. I'm just gonna keep making creatures. Renegade Doppelganger means I have like some pretty good late game like power. So I want to press the advantage as much as possible. Uh, yes. This deals one damage to any target. So I can sacrifice this to like until end of turn. So I don't think it dies like if they block. Yeah, let's go. Okay, yeah. This is kind of awesome. If I get a flyer, I can hit with a flyer. The creatures you control gain vigilance. That doesn't do very much. We have a 3-3 three, three vigilance. So I do still need to make a creature to block the vigilance. And if it's big enough, then I can get in with a doppelganger. Ooh. Ooh, that's good. Uh, yes. So I have a 1-1 one, one swamp walk. So I can hit for one here. And I kind of regret discarding all these swamps, but I can now hit for three swamp walk every turn. Like that's really, really good. Um, that lets me just skip my 5 mana play and just hit for a bunch of damage if I want to. Flyling, what is Myriad? When it attacks for each opponent other than defending player, you may create a token that's a copy of this creature. Okay, so it's just a 5 mana 4-4 four, four flying vigilant. I mean, that's still really good. They didn't attack with the Loxid on Sergeant. That's kind of crazy. Alright, let's kind of want to just get in with the Whispering Shade here. Just get in for 4 unblockable. Because I'm way ahead on turns. I don't know if that was correct, but it means I can go up to 8 next turn. Or like, go up to 8 eventually. Opponent does get to make 6 drops before me though. What is this? Can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. And they can make this into a 5-6? That's not so good. What does this do again? Counter target spell that targets an enchantment. <laughs> That's something else. So we need something that blocks the Herald of the Host. Otherwise we're in a bit of trouble. Still playing Swamps. Uh, can hit them for five. I think I need to make a creature here. Ooh, this is a 4-4. Four, four. I mean, I might as well say yes. So I can sacrifice two permanents, three permanents to do three damage to something, but that's not enough. 
I attack for one. But they're about to hit me for a lot of damage. All right, we need this to be nothing too broken. What is this? Create X11 Sand Warriors, where X is the number of lands you control at the time. That's... what? Oh, at the beginning of your next upkeep. Uh, that's kind of scary. And then when he leaves, exile all Sand Warriors. A little bit problematic there. Ooh, I don't know if that attack was good. So I can double block the edge crafters. They can only kill one of them. And then I can sacrifice Vigilant Martyr to regenerate which one they target. I'm cool with that. Better than taking five. Uh, do I want to regenerate the golem? So I might be able to put them on a two turn clock here. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So I can hit them for five damage down to 10. This can make it six. I think that's probably worthwhile. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So this is five damage. This goes one to the face. This goes one to the face. So that's six, seven. I think this is worth it. This goes face. There's another swamp. Okay, so now I can hit for uh, five, six, seven. I think this still works. Let me do the math again. So I sacrifice this. It does one. They're at 13. I can hit them for, I use that one black man and then six to hit them for seven. They're at six. And then I kill them next turn. So yeah, we're going to sacrifice this, go to the face, use this to make a creature, everything but the black. What is this? I don't know what that does, but we're going to pump this up. I don't think I die, and I, as long as I did the calculation correctly, they die on their next turn. I got to read this. It does something at the end step. Yeah, that's seven, and then they're at six, and I can hit them for six exactly next turn. So put a coin counter on another target creature. Whenever a creature with a coin counter on it dies, oh, that doesn't do anything because these are all tokens. Okay, sure, I'll put it here. So they make sand warriors, but those can't block. So they basically need to find an answer that kills me or kills this. Otherwise they lose. And that does nothing. Somehow we won that game, despite them having some good stuff. So I can block here. I take four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right, seven, eight, nine, ten. And do they have any enchantments? I guess I'll just block here. I don't know. They're dead. Pump, pump, pump. For six unblockable. Man, Swamp Walk's so good in this format. All right, uh, we'll sideboard. We'll just come right back here. So I'm on the draw again. Not the end of the world. And so opponents who don't like making one drops, I really like being on the draw. But obviously being on the play is just almost always preferred. Jackal Familiar. Can't attack or block alone. Well, that's really good if I want to get aggressive. Opponent's not making a two drop. I can get pretty aggressive here. Let's make a mountain. Discard a mountain. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to discard. <laughs> oh no, that's really bad. <laughs> I did not know this card existed. But we can beat down pretty hard here. They have a 2-3 Swamp Walk. All right, so we're not putting any swamps into play. That's rough. Freaking Thought Eater, man. Um, Keep putting down creatures. Choose one, put a counter on it. We're going to make a flyer for sure. And I have three power of flying here, which is pretty hard for them to deal with so even though we're down two cards here we can only make six drops i believe what is this I may sacrifice a land they probably will not be sacrificing a land i don't think right they get two counters on it so it becomes a four five that can't be good oh they can sacrifice a creature too okay that's what they were thinking about well we're just gonna keep making stuff here hopefully we can get why did i just play a swamp <laughs> I was just like clicking stuff. Didn't even realize I played a swamp. That's okay though. We should actually be pretty good. So this, we could just throw stuff at them with flying. As long as they don't get a flying blocker for a little bit, we should be okay. So they, it's just a 3-3. Three, three. I mean, they hit for two, but that's still not the end of the world. I mean, obviously I should not have played that swamp, but yeah, that was just a mis misclick. Um, let's go forest at Momir. And we're just being super aggressive here. What is this? Ooh, so that is haste. Um, I can actually just attack with this 3-4. If they want to double block, that's also fine. And this is, again, the benefit of just being very aggressive with this. Um, do I want to attack with Jackal Familiar? I don't think so. Could swing out. So if I swing out, they block here and here, and they take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. No, I'm going to keep these creatures back because I can throw them at them with the Stone Giant. Kill the 3-3. Three, three. Okay. I mean, that was the reason why... I would have attacked with them because they could have double blocked my stone giant, but they're at 13. Oh, 
<laughs> oh no. Oh boy. <clears throat> this is problematic. That is a very aggressive attack. That might just lose them the game, I'm gonna be honest. Because that was like one of their good blockers. And like, I know they win the late game, but tap two, untap birds you control, draw a card. So do I have another bird? I have a spirit and a beast. Tap two, untrap wizards you control to give something flying. This is a beast, no wizards, okay. Um, I think the only way I win this is just right click attack all. So they go Niv Mizzet on Reggie, a 2 3 and a 2 2. They take 1 2 3 4 5 6 7. They fall down to 6 life. That seems better than just waiting around with Niv Mizzet in play. Niv Mizzet kills my 2 1. But they're at 5 life. Like that's very, very low. So it turns out playing the swamp actually helped me. What is this? Okay, it's just a 3 3. But again, they're at 5 life. That's. I'm making 6 drops and they're making 8 drops, but. I just need like one thing that kills flyers. That is ambitious. That is super ambitious. I kind of like it though. If I get any removal creature, I just win on the spot. And it dies, create two, two, two black zombies. Uh, yeah, we swing out. Niv Mizzet can eat one of the flyers, but right now they take three and go to two life. And they the ground creature can only just trade off. I have a four, four, if that dies, then we get to go there. They get to kill my 1-1, one, one, but now Niv Mizzet can never attack. If I get any flyer or anything that does damage to the face, I just win. If they hit a creature that damages them, I also just win. No! No! <laughs> oh gosh, that was really bad for me. And now the Swamp Walk really matters. Yeah. Celestial Force. Well, my chance of winning just decreased substantially. Oh, that's a 4-4 four, four fear. I actually can't even attack fast enough to kill them, though. <laughs> I just have this this thing. And it's each upkeep. It's not it's not just one. They gain six life every turn cycle. Man, I would have had it. But that's the nature of Momir. Damage that would be dealt by it can't be prevented. Okay. I don't think I had much choice. I just needed to get as aggressive as possible. Yeah. I'm losing because I played that swamp, I think. I mean, they got lucky, but that was going to happen anyway. The only decision I made that changed anything was playing that swamp. Flash reach. Okay, I mean, I attack for four, but this doesn't go well. Yeah, now we're at the same life. They're going to gain life. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> All right, that was some good late game hits there. I... Am I dead? Wait, that could have been a mistake. No, that is trample. Well, we block there. We block here. We block here. I'm just dead. All right, uh, this is game three now. And I finally get to be on the play, let's do this. Yeah, the Swamp Walk, I mean that extra two damage, I don't know how much it mattered, but it wasn't great, we'll say that. Whatever player casts a red spell. Well, we're not gonna be playing red spells, so that is a one mana one one. Hey, they're making one drops. <laughs> See, what? They get a one mana one two death touch over there. Oh, that just stops any aggression I can have. So I think I'm just going to skip two and three. Take a bit of damage off the Wasteland Viper and hope to get tempo later on. One mana, one two death touch, huh? Well, that kind of works out for me because they're not attacking and I'm not attacking. Now my, my early game initiative is gone because they got a much better creature, but I have the late game initiative. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> That is one of the best three drops you can possibly get. This thing's going to be like a 10-10 very soon. I need a death toucher like immediately. Holy cow. No more than one creature can attack or block each combat. Well, that's actually pretty good for me. I can just chump block Terravore until something scarier happens. Ugh. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield. What? Holy cow. What is this composition by the opponent? <laughs> Yeah, I will take five here because it's going to grow by two every single turn. So I'm better off taking the damage when it's smaller. Discard a swamp. Ooh, lifelink protection from white and black. That's actually pretty good. Although they have Wasteland Viper. Hmm. Hmm. I need to deal with this Terravor so badly. What is this? The 3-3 three, three flyer? Okay. That's not the end of the world. I think at this point, I kind of want to chump block the Terravore, because I can't multi-block either. Let's play uh Swamp, discard a forest. Ooh, whenever another creature dies, put a counter on him. Oh, that still doesn't do very much, because I can't double block Terravore. 
Whenever they search a library, they suck a creature and lose 10 life. Hmm. So I can attack, but that just trades. This is absolutely bad for me. I guess I wait. They don't have good flying attackers, and maybe they play a creature that makes them search their library, and then they take 10, and somehow I can, like, win off of that. <laughs> what? What? No! Oh, man. Um... I guess I go to three. Rorix Bladewing, huh? All right, deck, give me the goods. First Strike Trample. That doesn't really do it. Because now they just attack with Rorix Bladewing. I have to chump block. Oh, I messed up, actually. I should have attacked with Blood Baron. Oh, they messed up. So I guess I block here now. <sighs> it's kind of rough, but at least Pilgrim of the Fires can get in for damage. But this feels like... This has more potential later on. I think that has more potential later on. So I'm actually going to chump block with... This is really hard. No, I don't think this... They have the Death Toucher. Yeah. I need to find a different answer here. But I have a 5-5 that can now at least block Rorik's Blade Wing. And I can start attacking. Opponent made a 0 mana creature. Kind of interesting. They also got Hangerback Walker. That's kind of sweet. I think that was just a misclick. I'm sorry, this has Trample? I did not know that had trample. Good god. Well, <laughs> I got really lucky. <laughs> I didn't know that had trample. <laughs> oh boy, I need I need some help. That thing is unbeatable in this format. 6-6. Six, six. I didn't know this had trample. I'm gonna be honest. Because if I knew that, I would have traded off Silent Arbiter so I could double block this sooner. As it currently stands, I am dead. To like everything. Yeah, they just attack with Terravore. I didn't know it had trample, man. I'm going to be honest. That is <laughs> the old 3 mana 12 12 trample. Seems pretty fair. <laughs> uh, see you guys next time.